Hello Electroheads, it's your friendly neighbourhood Tim here. Who are you? Your friendly neighbourhood Tim here. And I'm talking to you today because I've got money on my mind and the chances are you've clicked on this video because you do too. Arguably one of the largest obstacles to people like you or me getting their hands on a brand spanking new e-ride is the cost. Things are just so expensive these days. <laughs> So with the help of the Electroheads team, I've put together a list of the five best e-scooters for under £500. Now, of course, four of these are, you know, look very similar and one kind of stands out. It is a bit different, so you'll just have to stick around to find out why. But if at any point in this video you don't want to listen to me anymore and you want to just go and buy it, check out the links in the description below. So let's stop talking money and start talking scooters. Now, the first scooter on this list is one that maybe hasn't appeared on the channel for quite a while, and I think it's time it made a comeback because it's still really, really good. The Decent One is a great first e-scooter, and for a price tag of £349.99, it's a really solid package. This is the package. In fact, this was the first scooter that I rode whilst at the Electroheads HQ, and for me, it was a real light bulb moment. Powered by a 350 watt front mounted hub motor, the Decent One can reach a top speed of 15.5 miles an hour in the highest setting. Its 36 volt, 187 watt hour battery charges in two to three hours and offers 12 miles of range, which is slightly less than the other scooters on this list. With an IP54 rating, the scooter is safe from light water spray from all directions, meaning you can ride this at any time of the year, but I wouldn't advise riding it through deep puddles. Front and rear mud guards, mechanical brakes, front and rear lights, a bell that dings super loud, comfortable foot plate and rubber hand grips, this scooter has every feature you'd really want and need. Long story short, it ticks every box. The LED display is bright, clear to read and also presents all the info you need into a space neatly packaged on the handlebars. My favourite thing about the Decent is the speed, not from a die-hard speed freak aspect but from a convenience and safety aspect. The Decent gets up to the top speed of 15.5 miles an hour with ease and so that's particularly handy if you're out on the cycle path or on the road and of course it just makes the journeys that little bit quicker and shorter. It's also really comfortable and that's largely down to the 10 inch diameter pneumatic tyres that soak up the bumps and help keep your feet firmly planted to the deck. And finally, the Decent has a removable battery which is stored in the main stem. This means you don't have to worry about carrying the whole scooter upstairs or generally lugging it through the front door. It also means you can take the battery out and charge it safely indoors inside a fireproof bag or box. And at Electroheads, we love that. My only slight ag with the Decent is the narrower handlebars than the other scooters on this list, which does make the ride experience ever so slightly worse than normal. But if you hadn't just ridden all these other scooters in the minutes before, I don't think you'd notice. Also, as mentioned, that range is isn't as good as the other scooters on the list, but if you can still get your daily or weekly rides within that window, then this shouldn't be a problem. The second scooter on this list is the Tektron Elite 3500, which is a great all-rounder and is probably a great first e-scooter for someone looking to get their first taste of e-rides. It's got a sleek, concentrated design, it's potentially more city-friendly, and all in all, it's a great no-nonsense e-scooter. The Elite 3500 has a 350 watt motor with three speed modes and cruise control. Its 37 volt, 10 amp hour battery offers up to 18 miles of range. It features an E-ABS front brake, as well as rear disc brake and large front light on the handlebars. A wide and easy to read screen simplifies the important data you need whilst you're out on a ride. With a safety rating of IPX4, the Elite 3500 is protected from light splashes from all directions. So riding in the rain shouldn't be a problem, but again, I wouldn't recommend riding this scooter through deep water. The Elite 3500 also has puncture-proof honeycomb 10-inch wheels that are designed to soak up the bumps and stop you having to deal with any fun-ending punctures or spending your extra pocket money on new tyres, inner tubes and the labour that comes with it. The Elite 3500 really is another all-rounder. It provides great speed and performance when riding and is also uncomplicated in its design. I think its simplicity is really where this shines. It's a scooter. What more do you want? What do you expect? It has a handy cruise control feature that allows you to rest your thumb from the throttle and enjoy carving and weaving in addition to making sure you can have both hands controlling the scooter at all times. It also 
automatically deactivates as soon as you touch the brake. I particularly like that it comes with reflectors on the front and rear, as well as bright lights, making this a very visible scooter to other riders, road users or pedestrians. The Elite 3500 also folds down really nicely, making it easy to carry upstairs, into your office or help you pack it tidily away. Oh, and it also comes in five different colour options, which just adds that sense of personalisation to owning the scooter. Kind of like dressing up like your favourite Power Ranger. Now, those puncture-free tyres are good for, well, obviously one reason, which is not getting punctures, but that convenience comes at the inconvenience of ride quality, which I don't think is as comfortable as the other scooters on the list. That said, there is some front and rear suspension to help across the rougher asphalt surfaces, and at 10 inches, they still make for a stable ride. But on scooters, the tyre really does a lot of the suspension work, and you miss that on the 3500. I'm personally a fan of wider foot plates as well, and having ridden the other scooters on this list at the same time, felt that this was a little too narrow for my liking. But that doesn't mean it won't work for you. Now, the next scooter in this list is another one that's perfect for commuters or casual riders alike, and it's pretty much perfect in its form and function. I'm, of course, talking about the E Dash Limited Edition 1. Now, the very eager eyed of you would have noticed that this looks very similar to the decent one that featured in the list earlier. But in fact, the main difference is that this has an external removable battery as opposed to one that's located in the stem. But there are a few other differences. The E-Dash LE1 has a top speed of 19 miles an hour, and with a max range of 28 miles, you can certainly get to a lot of places quickly on this scooter. It's 350 watt front hub motor and 36 volt 360 watt hour removable external battery offers a very competitive package in the scooter market. A front disc brake and a rear foot brake, 10 inch inflatable tires and a cruise control system make for a comfortable and straightforward ride for you and your throttle thumb. Also with an IP54 rating, it's safe to use on rainy days, which is great to know for us who live in parts of the world where the weather is the daily small talk for a reason. Do you like weather? The E-Dash offers a great riding feel, particularly thanks to those large tires, which are capable of ironing out roughness in the road surface. And the responsive power output helps get you off the line and out of trouble if required. It really gives you the confidence to take it out at every opportunity, and you want to get out and ride this scooter. I like the way it looks and think it has a very presentable and sensible package. Also, the flashes of red on the throttle and cable do just give it a bit of spice. At £449, you're going to be really hard pressed to find a better product below the £500 mark. And if the E LE1 is tickling your fancy, then check out the link in the description below. There's really not too much to say that's negative about the E LE1. However, I would say that the slightly thin rubber handlebar don't give you that same feeling of holding on and maybe detract slightly from the sense of feel when riding. It might just be personal preference, but I do like to feel like I'm really holding on to something and not got my hand wrapped twice around the handles. The next scooter on this list is probably my favourite of the bunch. It's the Tektron Ultra 5000. Now, if you've been around on the Electroheads channel for a while, you might have seen that Rich did a full review of this scooter earlier in the year, which if you want to go and watch a video focused solely on this scooter, you can click up in the corner there and go and watch that. But if you're planning on sticking around, this scooter is exactly what I'd want to spend my £500 budget on. It's bigger than the others in this list. It's more comfortable and more fun to ride. But that's pretty subjective of me, isn't it? It's all subjective. It's all subjective. Just a quick word, however, before we get started on the Ultra 5000. We've had word from Tektron that stocks are limited with this scooter and they won't be replenishing them once they do eventually run out. Now that's bad if you wanted to get your hands on one, but it's also good news because they're gonna be bringing an updated version. If you don't wanna sit and listen to me talk about this scooter, then use the chapters below to find another one. By far, my favorite thing about the Tektron Ultra 5000 is the ride feel. It's bigger than the other scooters on this list, but it's definitely a case of bigger is better. Not only does it give you great visibility and give you more presence on the road or cycle path it encourages you to tackle lumps and bumps different quality surfaces and with the confidence that you're riding a proper e-ride and not just a flimsy bit of metal with a battery pack attached and that's not saying that the other scooters on this list are like that but just the ultra 5000 really is confidence inspiring when you ride it a bigger foot plate stops you from dangling your toes or dipping your heels saving your favorite trainers from any unwanted splashes and also allows you to stand how you feel most comfortable the wider and chunkier handlebars make you feel in control at all times a great feature for novice 
serious riders who aren't super comfortable yet riding an e-scooter. The real influencing factor on the ride quality is the super chunky 10 inch pneumatic all-terrain tyres which completely eliminate that road rattle and stops longer rides from becoming wearying on both your hands and legs. I really like the simplicity of the display in the middle of the handlebars, it's clear, no fuss and if you want more detail you can download the Tektron app to give you loads more insight into your scooter stats. Obviously all those bigger things are going to come at a price and the cost here is the weight. At 22.3 kilograms this is by far the heaviest scooter on the list so if you're using a scooter for an A to B journey then this isn't a major issue but if a leg of your trip is on the train or you need to lug it upstairs to your fifth story flat then this is probably something to consider. And one more tiny tiny little thing that did bug me about the Ultra 5000 was the only button on the display. I did find it a little sticky at times and was often unsure whether I'd actually pressed it or pressed it hard enough. Small thing I know, but I do love a proper button with notable haptic feedback, especially if you've got a glove on. The Tektron Ultra 5000 has a 500 watt motor, giving you plenty of punch on your way to top speed. The 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery provides up to 40 kilometers of range. Coupled with three speed modes, cruise control, and really generous front and rear suspension, you'll be enjoying a seriously comfortable ride. Front and rear disc brakes will bring you plus the scooter to a stop really quick and a very loud bell and electric horn will let people know you're on your way. This scooter will take you everywhere you need thanks to some chunky tyres and an ability to tackle inclines up to 20%. Tektron themselves say this scooter is perfect for the serious rider but in reality it's got a lot of features that make it perfect for a first timer. Now the final scooter on this list is a little bit different to the others. Oh, Cole, you're doing it again. Sorry. The Razer S85 is one of our favorite kids' e-scooters and for 199 pounds, we think it's well worth investing in. If you've got your own e-ride and you plan on riding off and leaving your kids. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They need to keep up, don't they? They need to keep up with mummy and daddy as they're riding around on their new e-ride. So why not get one for the kids? <laughs> The Razer S85 has a high torque maintenance free hub motor that delivers speeds of up to 10 miles an hour and the 12 volt rechargeable battery provides up to 35 minutes of ride time on a single charge. Plenty of play time for the younger electrohead. The S85 is built for kids older than eight and has a maximum rider weight of 54 kilograms. So it's really targeted at young kids who simply won't stop nagging mummy and daddy for a new way of getting to the playground. I want one! It has all the features of an adult scooter such as a thumb activated throttle, hand operated front brake and rear fender brake. So it's got the important tech in a kid friendly package. And before we get to the good and bad, make sure you get them a helmet and protective pads and keep an eye on them when they're riding. With an eight inch thick tread new front tyre, the Razer S85 has a good quality ride, that front tyre acting as suspension and stopping that uncomfortable road rumble through the handlebars, which themselves are covered in foam to give a comfortable grip. With that 35 minute ride time, kids will be able to get plenty of riding done before needing to recharge, and they'll definitely want to use all 35 of those minutes. The one bugbear we have about the S85 is the noise. It is louder than a lot of other kids' e-scooters. Shut up! But I wouldn't worry as the kids will be enjoying the ride far too much to hear it. But don't take it from me, if you want to hear what kids think of the S85, then check out the video above, where young Electrohead Gabes gives us his opinion on the Razor and other e-scooters. So that's the list complete. These are the five scooters that we strongly recommend you should go out and buy that are under £500. Let us know which one tickles your fancy and what you think you might be parting with your well hard earned cash for. And of course, if you do want to buy any of these, then check out the links in the description below. Thank you very much for watching the video. Remember to go and like and subscribe and all that useless, sorry, very good stuff to do. Thank you very much guys. And we'll see you in the next video.